I train MMA, I wear these in no-gi grappling, even though I'm not punching. Because in the fight, when I do my grappling, all the grips are changed because of these. Okay? My grip on my opponent's wrist is affected. My over-under, when I want to pummel in, is affected. All of these things are I have to be conscious of, okay? So practice in these, all right? Another thing, food for thought on positioning. Um, in there, I see guys, they do the trip when you feel it. Feels like because you're in transition, you can get that other leg out, you can get to full mount, maybe you want to get it out and get to side control. When I trained with Noguera on the Ultimate Fighter, he was my coach. One of the things he preached was half guard is your friend. Half guard in Jiu Jitsu might seem like crap, but half guard in MMA is great if you're on top. I have way more control from there. If I'm in full mount, yeah, that's great too, but I got a guy that's constantly trying to buck me off then. If I'm in his guard, he can submit me. If I'm in side control, I don't really have a lot. Unless I got Brock Lesnar's arms, then I can affect you with a three inch punch. Okay? But from half guard, no. Good, right there. From half guard, I can control here, I can short arm, I can shoulder, I can come through with elbows. If he comes up into me and rolls in, I can elbow and punch and push back down. I have a number of things without any any real worry. What's the only thing he's gonna do is have some kind of Kimura attempt, you know, from there. But I'm seeing it coming from a mile away, right? And I can hammer these ribs while I work my way out of it. This is a great position to be in, all right? I'm gonna go over some basics of striking that I like in weird places. You see guys, some guys do this. Not a lot of guys practice this, but I want you to be aware of it. You can practice it at any time. When somebody's doing something, shoot on me. I sprawl the same way we just learned, right? Shoelaces down, head control, tight waist. A lot of fights, especially in the later rounds, they get to this point and people stay here. The reason why is I'm on top, I'm a little tired. I don't feel like scrambling and trying to get to his back right now. I'm earning points right here and I'm gassing him more importantly, okay? So from here, I'm not just going to camp out and let him scramble back up and take me down. Go ahead and stop. All right. Now, I'm going to stay down here like this. I keep head control and I punch under the armpit into his chin. This one sucks because he's like this. So these punches are coming underneath. They're coming underneath. Go ahead, nice and slow so everyone can see. Control the head. Good. I'm looking into these punches right now because of his positioning. Come this way, sir. He shoots. I saw. I got this angle. He comes up to his knees a bit. I have all of this right here. I can, and I can believe you, I will measure this punch. This is not one where I have to be careful about over connecting or I'm in the mount and I posture and he rolls out. I'm, I'm, I got him stuffed here. So I'll take this thing to the moon and back down on his chin, all right? If I'm not immediately defending and standing back up like Chuck Liddell does, then I want to get to guard. From here, when do I win? I win with him close to my body. When does he win? He wins when he's postured up. He can pound the crap out of me from there, okay? So I'll do whatever I can to break him down. I'll bring my hips, my legs in to pull him forward, grip behind the head here. Now. A lot of guys talk about twister guard, rubber guard, those kind of things. It's very popular these days. I'm not going to go into all the moves from rubber guard, but the thing that I like about it, especially if you have longer legs like I do, is I'll come up here and I'll get a good rubber guard. I got my foot on the back of his neck, my hands cupping here, and my elbow drives on his shoulder. That keeps him where I want him, okay? This other leg stays tight, otherwise he passes it, okay? Other leg's tight. From here, I can punch. More importantly, I can elbow. Now, you can't 12 to 6 from ceiling to floor, but I can 12 to 6 this way, all right? Now, I won't spend all day here. When I had my first fight in the UFC, it was against Tom Lawler. Very good wrestler. Took me down the whole fight. I beat the shit out of him from this position. At the end of the fight, I didn't have a scratch on me and he had a win, okay? So that's the buyer's beware. I can sit in this position, and I can cut him, and I can mash him, but he's winning the fight if he's on top. That's the way the rules work right now. That's how the judges score it. So what I'll do is I'll sit here, I'll get him in this position, I'll hammer a bit, 
And then I'll go to transition to something else. I'll work my own plata. I'll work to push them back out, push off the hips and come back up, okay? I don't want to stay there the whole round. I know that firsthand, that's, that's exactly not what you want to do, okay? So again, I bring him in, cup the head, my elbow comes down, I bring this up. If you're not this flexible, don't try this move. Just, you know, work on stretching and things like that. But understand what you would do from here, okay? I want to control his arm. He can't hit me from there. Try to hit me with your other arm. Even if he connects, there's nothing, nothing behind it, right? Every time he goes to punch me, go ahead, I push down with my elbow. Now if even if he connects, there's nothing on it, right? Go ahead and connect. There's nothing on it because I'm pushing this elbow down. I punch my elbow, okay?